Good day everyone, I hope you are all doing fine today. This is the group 2 and we were tasked to discuss about the revolutionary age dated from 1765 to 1790. This video presentation is divided into four parts. First part will be the historical background to be discussed by me. Second will be the writers during the revolutionary age to be discussed by Rosalind Canizares. Third will be a poem and a short story to be discussed by Joseph Cantalaid. And last will be a novel and a drama to be discussed by Jai Kandagasaan. If you still want to know more about the revolutionary age, just keep on watching until the end of this video. Okay, let's start. I'll be talking about the revolutionary age dated from 1765 to 1790. Revolutionary Age is also called as United States War of Independence or American Revolutionary War. American Revolution was the first anti-colonial democratic revolution in history. Much of the revolutionary cause or reasons came from the colonial challenge to Parliament's power of legislation. It was the phrase taxation without representation that was to draw many to the cause of the American patriots against the mother country. And this was the beginning of the revolution. Since the patriots' demands could not be met, the country proclaimed itself independent from mother England and the United States of America were born. Defending the colonies against attack by the French and others had cost the British a great deal of money. As a result, the British had very high taxes in their country. They thus decided to shift some of their financial burden to the colonists. The Stamp Act of 1765, which taxed all legal documents, newspapers, and other documents, was met with a great uproar in the colonies. In 1766, this tax was repealed, means it was invalidated, but it was just the beginning of the problems between the colonists and the British. The Boston Tea Party in 1773 was an act of revolt against the British and their tax on tea in the colonies. Rebellion and this content were rampant. There were many battles fought and there were 13 colonies of Great Britain's North America gained their freedom and became the independent country of the United States and went and to form the United States of America. By the time the American Revolution took place, the citizens of these colonies were beginning to get tired of the British rule. And as what I have said earlier, the main reason why they started the rebel against Mother England was the taxation issue. So these were the 13 colonies who rebelled against the British rule. Delaware, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, South Carolina, New Hampshire, New York, Rhode Island, North Carolina, and Maryland. The period of the American Revolution was dominated by political writers. Beginning a decade before the Revolutionary War and ending about 25 years later. This period includes the writings of Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, James Madison, and Alexander Hamilton. This is arguably the richest period of political writing since classical antiquity. Important works include the Declaration of Independence, the Federalist Papers, and the poetry of Joel Barlow and Philip Penu. So I have here four facts about the American Revolution. The first shot fired in the American Revolution was on April 19, 1775, and it is called the shot heard around the world. The American Revolution was the United States' longest military conflict before the Vietnam War. Now, the Declaration of Independence is in 1776. Although the war was between the colonies and Great Britain, other countries got involved as well. The French were a major ally to the colonies and there were French, German, and Spanish soldiers who fought in the war. So I have here some takeaways so that you can really understand and have something to learn about the historical background during the Revolutionary Age. The first will be the representation. 
Um, one of the main reasons that the colonists rebelled against Great Britain is that they felt they were not represented in the British government. Um, the British government was making new laws and taxes on the colonies, but the colonies had no say. They wanted to have some say in the British government if they were going to pay high taxes and have to live by British law. Second is the war. It didn't happen right away. First, there were protests and arguments. Then some small skirmishes between the colonies and, lo and the local British army. Things just got worse and worse over the course of years until the colonies and Great Britain were at war. Next will be the independence. Each colony had its own local government. In 1774, they elected officials to represent them at the First Continental Congress. This was the first effort of the colonies to unite and make a single government. In 1776, the Second Continental Congress declared the independence of the United States from Great Britain. Okay, last will be the new government. The new government of the United States was um, different than the government of the colonist homeland, which is the Great Britain. They decided that they didn't want to be ruled by a king anymore. Um, they wanted a government that was ruled by the people. The new government would be a democratic government with leaders elected by the people and balances of power to make sure that no one could become king. And so this is the end of the first part. I hope that you have learned something about the historical background of the revolutionary age. Next part will be the writers to be discussed by Rosalind Canizaros. Now let us move on to the writers during the revolutionary age together with their famous letter works. So first is we have Thomas Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson was an American statesman, diplomat, lawyer, architect, and philosopher. He had previously served as the second vice president of the United States and was a proponent of democracy, republicanism, and individual rights that motivates American colonists to break from the Kingdom of Great Britain, which leads them to form a new nation. Jefferson also produced formative documents and decisions at both the state and the national levels during the revolutionary era. So as the colonies planned to break away from British rule, Jefferson took an active role in what would become the American Revolution and considered one of America's founding fathers. So his famous letter works are a summary view of the, the rights of British America in 1774, the declaration of the causes and necessity of taking up arms in 1775, and the Declaration of Independence on 1776, which is his primary works during the Revolutionary Age. Next is Thomas Paine. So, Thomas Paine was an English-born American political activist, philosopher, political theorist, and revolutionary. His ideas reflected Enlightenment, which is the era of ideals of transnational human rights. So according to historian Saul K. Padover, Jefferson is a corset maker by trade, a journalist by profession, and a propagandist by inclination. So during the American Revolution, he contributed to the Patriot cause by inspiring the troops with his 16 crisis papers as he served as a volunteer personal assistant to General Nathaniel Green, traveling with the Continental Army. So his famous Writings are The Common Sense in 1776 and The American Crisis on the same year, 1776. So these are the two most influential pamphlets at the start of the American Revolution and help inspire the Patriots to declare independence from Great Britain in 1776. So third is James Madison. So James Madison Jr. was an American statesman philosopher and founding father who served as the fourth president of the United States. 
So due to his pivotal role in drafting and in promoting the Constitution of the United States and the United States Bill of Rights, he is declared as the father of the Constitution. So he co-wrote the Federalist Papers along with Alexander Hamilton and he served as the 5th United States Secretary of State. So his famous lecture works are the Federalist Papers on 1787 to 88 and the Virginia Resolution on 1798. Next is Alexander Hamilton. So he was an American statesman, politician, legal scholar, military commander, and was one of the founding fathers of the United States. So he is the founder of the nation's financial system, the Federalist Party, the United States Coast Guard, and the New York Post newspaper. He was also an influential interpreter and promoter of the U.S. Constitution. So his famous lecture works are the Federalist Papers on 1787-88 to as a co-author together with James Madison and the Reynolds Pamphlet on 1797. Next is Felix Wetley. So Felix Wetley, also called Felix Wetley Peters, was the first African-American author of a published book of poetry. So she was born in West Africa and was sold into slavery which transports her to North America. She was enslaved by the Wetley family of Boston. So Phyllis Wetley became the first African-American and one of the first women to publish a book of poetry in the colonies. So many of her poems consist of elegies while others stress the theme of Christian salvation. So one of her famous literary works are the poems on various subjects and morals on 1773 on being brought from Africa to America on 1753 to 1784, and a farewell to America on 1773. Next is Philip Moran Frenou. So he was an American poet, nationalist, polemicist, sea captain, and, un and newspaper editor. He is also sometimes called the poet of the American Revolution. So aside from that, he was a strong critic of George Washington and a proponent of Jeffersonian policies. So his famous literary works are The Rising Glory of America on 1772, The Wild Honeysuckle on 1786, and The House of Night on 1776. Last is Joel Barlow. So he was a public official, poet, and author of the Mark Herrick poem The Hasty Padding. A graduate of Yale, he was a chaplain for three years in the Revolutionary Army. So along with John Trumbull and Timothy Dwight, he was a member of the group of young writers whose patriotism led them to attempt to create a national literature. His famous literary works are The Vision of Columbus on 1787 and The Hasty Pudding on 1796. Other writers during the Revolutionary Age are Timothy Dwight, John Trumbull, Thomas Godfrey, Benjamin Franklin, and Patrick Henry. Poem in the Revolutionary Period During the Revolutionary War time period, poetry was very popular. The war changed the way poetry was written. Poetry was written about the war or the feelings people had on certain war-based topics. Many of the poems were politically based and influential. So an example of revolutionary poem is Concord Hymn. So Concord Hymn was written by Ralph Waldo Emerson, a New England preacher, essayist, lecturer, poet, and philosopher, and, uh, and was one of the most influential writers and thinkers of the 19th century in the United States. So the Concord Hymn by Ralph Waldo Emerson is a song or a poem about the first shot that was fired by the Minute Men in Concord, Massachusetts. In 1775, the song eloquently explained the volatile time in American history when the Patriots 
fought the first battles against the British in the American Revolutionary War. This poem was Ralph Waldo Emerson's earliest published poems appearing in 1847 when he was in his mid-thirties. So here's how the poem goes. By the rude bridge that arched the flood, their flag to April's breeze unfurled. Here once embattled farmers stood, and fire that shot heard round the world. The full long since in silence slept, alike the conqueror's silence sleeps, and time the ruined bridge has swept down the dark stream which seaward creeps. On this day on this green bank by the soft stream, we set today a votive stone, the memory made there did redeem, when like our sires our sons are gone. Spirit that made those heroes there to die and leave their children free. Bid time and nature gently spare the shaft we raise to them and thee. So next is the short story in the revolutionary period. So an example of short story in the revolutionary period is the weasel. So the weasel is a parabolic short story come letter pinned on the 10th of November 1779 by American founding father Benjamin Franklin. So Benjamin Franklin is an American printer and publisher, author, inventor, scientist, and diplomat. So here is the summary of The Whistle by Benjamin Franklin. So Benjamin narrates the whistle story which he procured when he was a lad of seven years with the help of several copper coins given to him by his friends when he was on holiday. With all that money, he bought a mere whistle. His family, brothers, sisters, and cousins derided him for his actions. Saying that he had paid four times the sum of an actual worthless whistle, they also tried to make him feel horrid by, rem by reminding him that if he had thought correctly and only paid some of the whistle to the shop to the shopkeeper and nothing more, he could have bought so many other beautiful things. So the whistle story relates how the seven-year-old Franklin Franklin's delight in a new toys returned to dismay when he learns that he has paid far too much for it. Franklin crafted the tale into a moral list lessons, urging others to question the undue value attributed to a material possession. At this point of the report, I will be telling you about a novel and a drama from the American Revolutionary period. Let us now proceed to the drama The Prince of Parthia by Thomas Godfrey. Thomas Godfrey is a poet and dramatist who died at an early age of 26. The Prince of Parcha, one of his famous works, or the work that is mostly known for, was first published in 1765 and set in the Parchan Empire in the first century AD during the Arsacid dynasty. It can be seen that for the plot of this play, it has deep influence from Shakespeare's drama. Generally, the play is outlined based on Shakespeare's Hamlet. So, we will see at the ending of this play, in the summary that I'm going to present to you later, that the ending of The Prince of Parcha is highly similar or has similarities to the ending of Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet. So, this play has five acts, and on each act, I will be presenting just short summary for each of them. So, let's, let's proceed to Act 1. It follows the return of Prince Arcesis from foreign wars in which he was triumphant. An officer at court, Prates, discusses the event with a prince, Gortarses. However, there is trouble, trouble at home. Gortarses and Arcesis' brother is jealous of Arcesis' success. His stepmother, Termosa, also queen of Parthia, wants to take revenge for his son, Bononis, of whom Arcesis killed Fortresen. The event then goes to Vardanes and his officer, deciding to use the vengeance of Thermosa in destroying Arcesis, then there's Ivan, 
who is in love with Arcesis, but King Artabanus, king of Parthia, has unlawful feelings for Ivan. So we were introduced to characters in this act like Prince Arcesis who returned who just returned from war or combat in which he was triumphant, then the discussion of Protes and the Prince Cortarses. Then there's the stepmother of Arcesis named Thermosa, who wants to take revenge for his son. And then there's Ivan, who fell in love with Arcesis. Then King Artavinus, who has feelings for Ivan. And then there's Vardanes and his officer, who plan to destroy Arcesis. In Act 2, Arcesis tells Betas about his feeling for Ivan. And Vardanes and Lysias, upon hearing it, decided to tell King Artabenus that Arcesis is a traitor who sympathized with Parthian enemies. In Act 3, Thermosa found out about King Artabenus lusting for another woman, and she got very angry about it. She informed Vardanes about it, and he decided to use it and destroy Arcesis and take the throne of Parthia. In front of King Artabenus, Arcesis asked for Ivan's hand in marriage, in which the king had granted him, for he promised Arcesis to give what he wants because he was an amazing child. Arcesis was told by Ivan about the king's love for her, but Arcesis says that he loves her more. Then Vadanes tells King Artabanus about Arcesis being a traitor. So in this act, Thermosa found out about King Artabanus' feelings for Ivan, and then Arcesis asked for Ivan's hand in front of the king, in which the king granted for him because the king thought that he was an awesome child. And then it goes with Vardanes telling the king about Arcesis being a traitor. So Vardanes is, plot, is plotting to destroy Arcesis and get the throne in Parsha. In Act 4, Vardanes and Lysias was heard talking about how they killed King Artabanus in his sleep. The two planned to put the blame on Arcesis, while Protes and Gortarses, who heard their conversation, planned to tell the general about who truly killed the king. Arcesis was thrown in prison with Betas for being accused of regicide. Thermosa fails on her attempt to kill Arcesis in prison as she sees the bloody ghost of the king. The sight causes her to hit her head against the wall, committing suicide. Baza Pernes arrives and releases Arcesis. The two plan to get Vardanes and make Parcha right again. So in this act, Vardanes and Lysias was heard talking about how they killed the king in his sleep, and then they were planning to put the blame on Arcesis. But someone heard them, Pratis and Gortar says, and they plan to, to tell the general about the truth truly killed the king and then Arcesis was thrown in prison for being accused and then Thermosa who goes into the prison to kill Arcesis for, for her vengeance fails in her attempt because she sees the ghost of the king and it causes her to commit suicide upon hitting her head on the wall and then Arcesis and Betas was released because Barza Fernandez arrives and and releases them. <coughs> the last act, Act Five, Ivan dislikes Vardanes coming to her, but before he could hurt the woman, Lysias hurriedly come to him and tells him about Arcesis escaping the prison and knowing about his plot. <coughs> Excuse me. Then a battle begins in the palace as Ivan waits for the. For the news about Arcesis, her maid reports mistakenly about Arcesis getting killed. Unable to bear it, Ivan drinks poison, of which at the time the prince, Ar the prince Arcesis arrives and holds the dying Ivan in his arms. Neither could Arcesis bear the death of his lover, so he lands his sword into himself. It ended up with Gotarces, who was not much involved in the events of the play, becoming the king. Other characters also died, including Vardanes and Lysias. Betas also dies in the final scene. So as you can remember from the drama Romeo and Juliet, the ending of the Prince of Parcha is highly similar or has similarities to the ending of Romeo and Juliet as what I have said earlier. 
particularly in the event where the two lovers in the Prince of Parcha ended up dying, just like in Romeo and Juliet. So that is all about The Prince of Parcha by Thomas Godfrey. So just a quick recap about what I have presented in my report. I discussed about The Prince of Parcha by Thomas Godfrey, which is all about the prince, Arsaces, the lover, Ivan, in which both of them dies in the end. So that is all about my report, the drama from the American Revolutionary Period. Um, in regards with the novel, we've searched for one that was published during the American Revolutionary Period, but we have not found any. Most of the writings during the period are political writings and essays. We were supposed to include um, The Power of Sympathy, a novel by William Hill Brown, published in 1789. Although the American Revolutionary Period ended in 1789 and in some reference 1790, in the year that the novel Power of Sympathy was published might still be covered in the revolutionary period. Most of the results in our research state that the, the Power of Sympathy is a novel that belongs to the early national period. We have not found any novel or we have not found any novel published or written during the American Revolutionary Period or if there's any, perhaps it was not made known because we weren't able to find anything on our research. But if in case you may know any novel that was written or published during the American Revolutionary Period, we'd appreciate if you'd tell us about it because we might have also missed something. So this will be the end of our Report, I hope that you've gained knowledge and information about our topic since this will be very useful in the near future. So that would be all for today. Thank you and God bless.